what you are experiencing internally will be reflected externally. Um, Absolutely. But it, it's totally possible to create that safety. So for you, if it's like, okay, I want to feel like I am never abandoned. How can you show up for yourself so that you're never abandoning yourself? How can you solidify that relationship between your inner king and queen? Hello, uh, welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us and her name is Crystal Doyle. Now, Crystal Doyle is an intimacy and relationship coach who specializes in helping single successful women who struggle in dating and love. Her work is designed to empower women to understand why patterns keep playing out in their love life, to understand the deeper reasons why they keep attracting certain scenarios. Uh, once women understand the deeper reasons why these people and scenarios keep showing up, Crystal helps them to remap their love blueprint and to start attracting different men or women. Hi, Crystal. How are you doing today? Really good. It's good to see you again. Yeah, you too. Now, um, one of my friends recommended you um, uh, because I was looking for a relationship coach for my podcast and um, she uh, recommended you and I, uh, you know, I had a pre-chat with you uh, last week and honestly, um, I, I was so excited, uh, you know, I, I'm so excited to um, interview you because, you know, the things that you were saying were just so on point and I'm sure it's going to help so many of our listeners um because the relationships are probably the the most problematic uh thing on this planet right now <laughs> i would say yes i agree yeah and i think it was such a beautiful um synchronicity how somehow we connected and we didn't even really know that much about each other before we had um a zoom catch up and then we got on the call and it was um a lot of fun and yeah. we had some great discussion so um yeah, yeah absolutely really for the listeners who don't know much about you can you tell us a bit about yourself a brief overview yeah um so for those of you listening so my name is crystal doyle and i'm based in sydney in australia um and i work as a love dating intimacy coach um and yeah i guess my specialty at the moment is working with um people who are actually single at the moment so it's more about helping people and setting them up for success before they get into their next relationship um so yeah i love love this type of work so i'm really excited to um to uh, share some insights um yeah yeah amazing i mean yeah i think we all need relationship coaches <laughs> in our life um was there like any point in your life where you struggled with relationships yourself yes 100 <laughs> percent <laughs> and uh i guess that's really what inspired me to become a coach myself so uh, I'm 34 now. Um, during my 20s, I had a really long um, relationship, about six years. That was um, quite a roller coaster, lots of emotions, quite toxic. Um, and I came out of that and really just threw myself into working really hard and studying. Mm -hmm. And it was when I hit 30 that I just found myself wondering what's going on. like. You know, I seem to be doing well at work and um, have great friendships and relationships around me, but my love life was just like a disaster. And I couldn't understand, you know, what was it? Why was it easy for other people and not for me? Like, why was I struggling? And I love to understand why, mm. <laughs> you know, I love to under like just understand things. And I, so I randomly saw an ad on Facebook come up um, for a relationship coach. I'd never really heard about it before. I'd never considered going to, um, you know, counseling or therapy because I didn't feel like I was, um, you know, having a really hard time. I just wanted to understand myself better. Hmm. So when I went through um, working with a relationship coach, I, I was just absolutely blown away 
at how much um, I didn't realize had been playing out subconsciously that all the stuff that had happened in my childhood that I'd um, you know, seen in my parents' marriage that I'd learned as a child was completely dictating my adult relationships and, um, and why I wasn't really seeing success and why I didn't really know how to navigate adult intimate relationships. Um, and after that, I was just like, oh my God, this is such, you know, helpful, useful information that needs to be shared with everybody. I was like, you know, we can't avoid relationships. They are life. Why do we not get taught this stuff in school? I was just like absolutely baffled. And so I was just, there was just something so um, ingrained in me. I was like, I have to get this information out to other people so that, you know, they don't feel as lost as I did. Mm. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I struggled. Um, and yeah, so after I worked with a coach, like I just knew I had to, I had yeah. to share it and help other people. Yeah, it's something that I can sort of relate myself that, um, you know, I'm doing so well in all areas of my life, but relationship <laughs> is something I can't seem to get it right. And it's driving me, um, you know, <laughs> it's driving me insane. <laughs> and so this, you know, I'm sure... Um, Many of our listeners would want uh, to know the answer to this. Um, I know I do. Wh why do you think that we keep attracting someone who's emotionally unavailable, someone who does not want to commit, and someone you actually do have a con deeper connection with and everything's going great, but then they pull away and they run away? Why is that? Yeah, that's, there's a lot to that. And that's such a great question. So um, thank you for asking that. Um, and this again was why I was so gobsmacked when I worked with a coach and was like, oh my God, why did someone not tell me this stuff? Um, so I'll start with some of the groundwork. So from when we're born to age seven, our minds basically don't have a filter. So mm -hmm. everything that we see, hear, feel, experience, we're taking in, but we don't have that we don't have that judgment call to assess whether something is true or false yet. You know, we're, we're, we're still babies, toddlers, kids. And so what we're taking in, we don't realize that that sits in our mind subconsciously. So during those years, we're already establishing rules of the way we think the world works, mm. even about love and relationships. So what we're seeing as a child will actually sit in our mind subconsciously as like an operating system of our brain. So if you as a child felt like, um, you know, your parent wasn't always there for you to meet your emotional needs and you felt that as a child, you might not even remember that as an adult, mm. but you may then find yourself as an adult being so drawn and attracted to someone who is emotionally unavailable hmm. because at a subconscious level, your brain is saying, this is familiar to me. So it's hmm. almost like on a subconscious level, it feels safe for you. Hmm. Whereas hmm. someone who is emotionally available is not familiar to you. Hmm. So that part of your brain is going red flags, red flags. No. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's, that's, that's part of it. Um, also on an energetic level, if there is something that has happened to you whilst you're growing up, and I'll talk about my story for an example. I witnessed cheating or infidelity as a child. I was aware of it. Um, I never spoke about it. I never recalled it as an adult. But as an adult, I, for some reason, was attracted to men who could not be faithful, mm. even if they said that from the start up front, there was somehow I convinced myself that there was such a strong connection that it was meant to be. Little did I know that on a subconscious level, I was pre-programmed <laughs> to be drawn to someone like that because that was familiar to me, was someone who wouldn't be faithful. So at that young age, I'd already established a belief that I could be loved, but I would also be cheated on because that's that's what i witnessed as a as a child and so a lot of people don't realize that there's so much that has happened in their childhood that they may not even remember 
-hmm. that that is already dictating what they believe is possible for them in love and relationships. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us have something that's happened to us in childhood um, that is dictating who we are attracted to and who we are, we are drawn to um, as adults. And a lot of us fall into this trap of feeling this intense chemistry, physical attraction, just something you can't explain. It's just like, oh my God, I just want to be with this person so bad. Yeah. And we think that that means something, that mm. that means I'm meant to be with that person. Um, but what happens is I, I refer to it as wound mates. So mm. for me, for example, my wound was cheating. Mm. So I didn't realize I was energetically putting out this frequency of that's my wound. And so I was attracted to the men who would be an exact match to that. Mm. who would then basically show me that wound. Mm. Show me the thing that I most needed to work on or heal, but I had no idea. I didn't understand why it was happening. Mm. And that was the most frustrating thing was I just kept attracting men who, even though they maybe wanted to have a relationship or wanted to be faithful, couldn't explain why they just weren't able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was so frustrated at why I kept attracting that. Um, and that's also why I was like, I have to figure out why, why does this keep <laughs> happening? Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, uh, uh, you said, you know, uh, programming starts at the age around the age of seven and in you. So, um, oh, it's so when we're born to seven, so it's when already we're born to seven. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Cause, um, it, it just, my, um, I just had a light bulb moment where I'm just sitting here saying I'm struggling with relationships. But then again, I remember, most from uh, when I was born until seven, my dad and my 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 mom were never. There was no attachment because my dad moved to another country when I was three, and then my mom was ill. So, um, so I guess a lot of that, um, what I'm experiencing now in uh, like uh, romantic relationships, is exactly. I think it's going back to my childhood, you know, uh, being abandoned. I felt abandoned by my dad because he was in another country. So now I am, uh, it's only like a couple of weeks ago, I was at this, um, this workshop and, um, and um, it, it came in my radar that I have abandonment and then neglect issues. Um, and I keep attracting partners who like doing the same thing, like in romantic wise, you know, they, uh, they almost like a mirror. And I would, I would say to listeners as well, mm -hmm. I know it can be really, it can almost feel disheartening or like a bit of a shock to realize that, but know that it's actually such a blessing once you become conscious of it and you'll mm -hmm. realize, you realize why it's been happening mm -hmm. because until you're conscious of it, it's not going to change because mm -hmm. you need to become aware of it first of all, to be able to change it. But yeah. It's, it takes a lot of inner work um, to get to that stage. Um, um, now, talking about inner work, um, you know, most people in our spiritual community know this term shadow work. And, um, oh, actually, not most people, all of us know about shadow work. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why do you think shadow work is such a game changer in dating? Yeah. So I have done a lot of work with um, shadow work myself this year with my own. So I actually hired my own um, intimacy and relationship coach as well. Um, and she talks a lot about specific roles that we take on board. Um, be it an over-functioning role or an under-functioning role. So um, I'm sure a lot of people listening can, can resonate to, um, you know, taking on an overly responsible role because we want to help people. Um, and so what can happen is, and I really resonated with the strong, independent woman, the high achiever, mm -hmm. what can happen is when you're growing up, um, you can really take on these roles too far. And what I mean by too far is that at some point during childhood, as we're growing up, there are parts of ourselves that 
basically get judged or shamed. And I'm sure everyone can relate at some point being told, um, no, you can't say that because that's mean. Mm. You know, you have to think about everyone else's feelings. Mm. You know, you have to, you have to give to others. Um, you know, you need to, you need to be helping everyone else. And so you kind of take on this persona that isn't your natural self, but you are conditioned to be that way because mm. you know, we're, ta we're taught to be good little boys and girls and, you know, look after everybody else. Um, but we're not taught the importance of actually looking after ourselves first. Mm. Mm. Um, and so there are parts of us that get judged or shamed um, that we don't, we then think are not acceptable. So we don't mm. want to show those parts of ourselves to the world. Um, some common things uh, are being seen as selfish. You know, we don't want people to think that we're selfish and we're full of ourselves. We don't want people to think that we're a bitch or mm. we're an asshole. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. we don't want people to think that we're mean yeah. um, or even that we're needy. Mm. Yeah. And so we try and cover those things up so much, which are our shadows. Mm. Um, by going really far the other way. So you might, you know, men and women might become people pleasers. Mm. You might be, you know, giving so much because you feel like that's the right thing to do, yet you're so exhausted and mm. tired. Um, so oh. <laughs> yeah, go on. being able to recognize that those are natural parts of ourselves that we can actually... Um, bring back you know because yeah. at some point we've been told it's wrong it's bad yeah. but there are parts of those there's i call it there's medicine in those shadows for us mm -hmm. now for me a lot of it was actually owning that bitch energy mm. and it's actually a good thing because mm. i had really shitty boundaries i couldn't yeah. say no, i couldn't say no to people yes. i was i forever felt like i was the person that people were relying on because mm thought that I had my shit together all of the time mm. um and so I never felt like I could you know break down or say that you know I was having a bad day because I had been taught that you know people are to rely on me I can't be seen as needy mm. you know do you so, think oh, sorry go for it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you were gonna say something yeah. yeah and so when you actually recognize that and start to embody those parts of yourself that you've disowned, you start to become whole again. You start to become mm. more aligned with your soul. You start to become more aligned with who you actually are, mm -hmm. not who you've been told you need to be. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually helps you be cleaner in your relating with people because if you can't own that, you know, that, that bitch energy or, you know, being selfish because you've been told it's bad, mm. you're going to be, you're going to be over giving to everyone else and not like loving on yourself, mm. which you, you're not going to be able to say no to people. Yeah. And that's a really big one in dating is being able to discern your yes and your no, mm. you know, is it, is it a full fuck yes? Or mm. are you just saying yes because you don't want to be seen as mean? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, uh, boundaries is it's quite funny because in in dating you have no boundaries but you and you do end up attracting people who have boundaries so when you are giving it all they put they pull 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 away it's like oh my god and then it's kind of teaching you how to set boundaries go in work on it and then and then and then go out in the world now I was just wondering is it wise to rather than going on all these different dating sites and everything but first go and work on the shadow first before you go out into the world is it, in a dating world is it is it wise to do that or do you think it's better to just um just go on the dating world and then and then work with your shadows alongside it what, what do you think that's a good question actually um i actually my preference is for, you know, whatever stage you're at, men and women, to actually take some time out for yourself before you go into dating mm. so that so that you actually feel, have a level of mm. confidence 
you know, you've got a level of self-awareness already. You don't have to know everything. We're never going to be in a, you know, perfectly healed or anything like that. But if you already have some tools for yourself, um, you are, you know, you're able to look after yourself in the process. Mm. Um, so I definitely think um, doing some work before you go into dating is definitely helpful. Mm. I think it's definitely important to know yourself, have a level of understanding about, you know, what, what your triggers are, what have mm. been your issues in the past and be aware that those, you know, may come up again so that you can actually notice them and work through them. Um, so, yeah, I think doing some work before you go yeah. into the day um, rather than going from one thing to the other that you're yeah. never taking that time. Yeah, and, yeah, like like you said, so many people, uh, they go out in the dating scene even when they break up, even after a long-term relationship, they go out in the dating scene and, and it does not end uh, good for either of them uh, because, uh, you know, one person still carrying all that um, uh, from the previous relationships and not giving enough time to heal, not giving enough time to do the shadow work. Um, and it, it makes sense to take a time out and work on yourself first. And um, there's, um, uh, you know... I was thinking like, you know, when you actually meet your soulmate, like now soulmates, you have many different but romantic soulmate. Um, when you meet your soulmate, they automatically bring up a shadow work. Like they automatically do. People in our society think that um, uh, your soulmate is going to be all rosy. They're going to be yeah. a prince, charming princess, whatever is going to, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, they do bring out the best in you, but they also bring mirror the shadow in you and that's where i feel like uh most people run um in relationships not able to deal with the shadows what are you yeah. what, what, what are your thoughts on that yeah i think that's a really good point actually um and you know relationships are such a great tool for growth if you're mm. willing to face that stuff yeah um and the more that you practice and you know um are willing to face into when you're getting triggered, even if it is just with a friend or if it's your family member, mm. um, you know, the more able you, you are to do that in intimate relationships as well. But absolutely like this, we get fed this bullshit story that, um, you know, it's going to be like in the movies and the right person, it's just going to flow effortlessly. Yes. And that, no, <laughs> like you wouldn't even want that. Like anything, that is too easy you're going to get bored with like you want to be able to grow with your partner so of course they're going to trigger you um so that's why relationship coaching is so useful because you're learning tools of how to navigate when you get triggered how to mm. communicate with that person because we all communicate so so differently um but there's such opportunities for growth if you're willing to face into that but yeah i would say there's a lot of people who uh, hide from mm. these opportunities for growth by being in relationships which are mediocre yeah They're not yeah you know no, no one's really speaking their truth no one's really being honest about how they feel mm. it's just this is comfortable it's ticking the boxes for now yeah. um yeah, absolutely. And then the anything that oh, well, this doesn't take, it's not a perfect match. We moving on to the next one. So it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's it's a great point that you um, the relationship between um, like partners is uh, both of you need to be willing to be vulnerable and grow. Vulnerability is another thing. I think I've been coming across that. And, uh, like I I have a big open heart. I'm sure many of our listeners do. Um, and I, there's, I don't have a problem in being vulnerable in rela like in relationships, but then, you know, it's like, I'm the only one being vulnerable and willing to work on the triggers and the, the things, but, um, the people that I'm attracting, they're not, so they run away completely. Um, yeah. so yeah, so like I said, it's on the surface and we want Prince Charming, Princess, uh, Princess, or, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not rosy, it's not rosy. <laughs> you have to do the, the, the deep work. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I can, I just, because you made a really good point there about what you're attracting. I would say something that's been uh, like super beneficial 
to understand from my coaches is that remembering that what's what we're seeing or feeling being reflected to us from the people um, that we're attracting is that it's all, like you said, it's all a, a mirror. Mm. And so um, what you are experiencing internally will be reflected externally. Um, Absolutely. But it, it's totally possible to create that safety. So for you, if it's like, okay, I want to feel like I... I'm never abandoned. How can you show up for yourself so that you're never abandoning yourself? How can you solidify that relationship between your inner king and queen hmm. yourself? Um, which is, yeah, I think is really important. It's something we don't realize is that we have this inner union of our masculine, our feminine, our king and queen within us. And so if you can work on that internally, you'll start to see that change externally as well. Yeah, this perfect, perfect timing that you brought uh, masculine and feminine in because I was about to ask you. This. <laughs> so now, you know, we know about the divine masculine and divine feminine energy. Now, I don't mean divine masculine and feminine as in man and a woman. A woman and a woman can carry both and a man and a man can carry uh, carry as well. So what roles do you do you think that these energies play in our relationships? Yes. Uh, a really important role. Um, yeah, that yeah, it is. It is really um, important to understand that we both, whether you're man, woman, whatever, um, you know, you are. We all have both energies within us, but we will have one that is more dominant, whether that's a masculine energy or the feminine energy. Mm. Um, but I think it's really important for us to understand um these particular energies and the premise around polarity so within any relationship you want polarity because polarity is what's creating that magnetic effect between mm -hmm. two people um so if you have uh you know even if it was a man and a woman if if the woman is being more in her masculine all the time you're not going to have that polarizing effect where they're you know drawn together um and so it's about understanding when are you in those energies yourself and how are you showing up in your mm. relationship mm. Um, i can certainly say uh from working in corporate world that i was in my masculine very strongly all day mm. and i didn't even know that there was a thing as masculine and feminine energy mm. so when I was in relationships, I actually found that quite often I would still be showing up in my masculine energy mm. with an, um, and that I, I was actually emasculating men because I was still in that energy. I was still being competitive mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and picking things apart rather than actually, um, appreciating their energy so i think it's actually really important for us to understand i guess the the differences between between them and where we are at when we're in our partnerships um, how can how can uh people tap into their masculine and feminine energy you know yeah so i think Firstly, just having an understanding of what those energies are. So when I think about my masculine energy, I think about, you know, the provider energy. Um, I think about discipline and structure and um, routine. And so one of the things that I love to do is actually have a um, ritual of actually appreciating my mm -hmm. masculine energy because the masculine thrives on appreciation and um, a lot of us, women, men, don't learn to appreciate that energy within ourselves. But if you think about it, if our inner masculine is providing the roof over our head, is providing us the structure to get up in the morning and do our morning ritual, yeah. to go do that workout, yeah. um, you know, that's a really beautiful thing that we need to appreciate. Um, so that's how I think about my masculine energy. Yeah. Um, whereas the feminine is more 
not about the structure and the discipline it's about the flow it's about the creativity mm. the emotion the the feeling and that's very powerful as well um and one thing i would say that's been really helpful in terms of a practice is actually thinking about okay if i have this union within me of my inner king and queen mm. if they were to have a conversation would they be happy oh that's a really good tip that's a really, I'm going to do this myself. <laughs> yeah. And it's surprising what comes up. So I literally, mm. what you can do is you can literally have like two pillows. So you can have one where it's like, that's your king, one that's your queen. Mm-hmm. You sit in the spot and you're like, you, like, okay, I'm in my, this is my king. Like, what does he want to say to my queen? Mm. And I was so surprised at what came up. Um, wow. I, re- I realized that I was, my king was, really dominant and my Mm. queen was like what the fuck like you're not making any space (laughs) for me you're not making any time for me I don't feel like a priority Mm. um all the money gets spent on your practical shit when Mm. I want self-care yeah and so that is exactly what was being reflected back to me from men as well was Mm. men work a lot Mm. yeah I don't feel prioritized as a queen so yeah it's a really really useful practice just to start feeling into your own masculine and feminine within yourself and getting in touch internally. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a really good advice. Thank you so much for that. I think many of our listeners will be going and playing with the, you know, pillows. It was like, okay, you're divine masculine and you're divine feminine. Let's do this. <laughs> Guys, give it a try. I know I will. Um, so, you know, we we're in um well the, by the time we are recording this right now we are in a in a physical we are in a lockdown basically so with this coronavirus um so i know uh dating in general is is quite it's kind of hard but uh dating in during lockdown it's even more harder so um what are the tips you can give to the listeners who are struggling with online dating during uh lockdown right now yes I actually think that this period has really presented a completely different opportunity for us to see online dating in a completely different light. And I actually think more people are being open to it now Mm. because the options we had before have now been taken away or reduced. Mm. Um, So I think online dating is a great tool. Definitely be open-minded about it. Um, you know, you can meet people that you would never otherwise meet. Um, You know, we're so busy with work and our regular routines. There are people that, yeah, we just wouldn't otherwise meet. Um, So tips with online dating. Um, I have found the apps to be very useful. I would say going going into it, um, have a clear idea of what you're actually looking for. So... If you're looking for um, someone who wants a committed relationship or you want something casual, make sure you know that, make mm-hmm. sure you, um, you know, put that in your profile so that people know. Yeah, um, but I, I feel like during lockdown, casual isn't going to cut it because we have to wear masks now. <laughs> I reckon some people here in Australia are still um <laughs> really okay well I, I'm sure it's everywhere really I mean you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but I would say it's actually a great way of um already filtering people because you can use it to filter to people who already are looking for the same thing so like for me um I would filter for someone who's looking for a committed relationship, not something casual, mm. and someone who actually wants to have kids too. Mm. Um, they're two mm. big, um, non-negotiables for me. So already I'm kind of like pre-qualifying um, people. Mm. Um, yeah. I would also say that uh, you've got to have a bit of patience with it and be consistent. Um, you know, be willing to put some time in um each day, even if it's just 10 minutes to go on, um, swipe, have a look, maybe have some conversations with people. Um, It can, do expect that, you know, there are going to be a lot of people who are flaky, 
Mm. They might not return your message or they might um, not message you depending on which app you're using. Um, but don't waste energy <laughs> thinking about why. Why has that person not returned um, Yeah, message? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> ghosting is is probably it's it's uh, it's uh, it's leading the way right now in, in online dating and um and there's a lot of people um who been ghost go, been ghosted like you know and it's it, it does it, it's a form of rejection when you're into someone and they they're not giving the same respect to you even being honest with you say hey look i'm not really looking for anything right now i mean there's no closure in it what what advice could you give those people listeners who are being ghosted and they're getting frustrated what could you tell them right now that will help them sort of see things in a different perspective yeah good question i always think of it as it's not rejection, it's just redirection. Mm -hmm. And you really do have to go into online dating with, you know, continually building your self worth. Like if you're going into it, be continually your like cheerleader of like, yeah. I'm a motherfucking queen or king. And yeah. of course I'm a bloody catch. Like mm -hmm. you do have to come from that mindset because it can be, um, a little bit frustrating when mm. those things happen um but i would say like you will you will get what you uh focus on so if, if you're saying oh everybody ghosts me everybody um you know everybody is flaky mm. um and you keep paying attention to that that's what you will keep Attracting. finding so i i tend to focus on i'm like you know what i always meet great guys um they're always really respectful. I actually have fun on my dates, even if there's no second date. Mm -hmm. And I just repetitively say those things and I choose not to focus on the fact that maybe there's like, you know, 10 people who I matched with who never mm -hmm. sent me a message or people that never responded to my message. Mm -hmm. So um, it can seem a little strange at first, but yeah, yeah make sure you're focusing on the positive, um, even if it is just one date, what like, be present on that day. How can you have, how can you have fun um, and just like enjoy yourself? Yeah. I mean, you know, um, uh, talking about date, like going on a first date or something, um, uh, there's, while well, I've been on a couple of dates myself and it's, it seems like um, people are quick, not just myself and my friends are complaining about this as well. It seems that people are, very quick to brush brush you off like you know say oh one day i didn't feel anything uh next person i mean you know it's it's if it, it seems like no one's willing to build that connection with um with someone i mean and i would think that you need to go on a couple at least a couple of dates to get to really know the person rather than oh i i did not like the way you know this this he said this she said that uh that's why that's a no for me um but you know you can what are your thoughts on like do, do you think that we uh a lot of people are very quick to just say no um or or, I, or is it wise to go on like a couple of more even if you're not feeling it yet a couple of more dates to see how things go and if you're not feeling it just be honest with them look um i'm not feeling it i would say um like a muscle start practicing your intuition hmm. um so I actually feel generally that I have a pretty good indication after our first meeting in person. And, mm. but that's, that has come with practice. I have to say, I don't yeah. think I started off that way, but it's now like, I actually listen to how, how does my body feel like mm. next to this person? Do I feel like I actually w would like to like cuddle them or yeah. like, I feel like being close to them. Mm. And, and sometimes my body just tells me it's a full no, like straight away. It's like, I'm uncomfortable. I can't explain why. Mm. Um, so I think that some people may think that it's harsh and like, why didn't you give them another shot? But sometimes you just know, you mm. feel it so strongly. Mm. And I think mm. the more you start to like tune into your body and how you're feeling, mm. you'll know if it's a yes or a no. Mm. Um, what I was t talking about earlier is you'll get better at discerning mm. really quickly what's a yes and what's a no for you. 
And I mean, if you think about your soulmate, um, you want it to be a fuck yes. Mm. So, you know, if you're going on a date with someone and you're like, oh, you know, I just haven't been on a date in a while. So maybe I would go on a second date with them, but I'm really not feeling it. Um, mm. Or I know that they're actually just looking for something casual and that's mm. not what I want. Then why put yourself through it if, if you're mm. not really? Um, you're not really you're feeling it. And then, yeah, and the other person may, I get your point, the other person may start to develop more of feelings for you and then it, you become so, sort of messy. <laughs> so I, I, I see your point. Um, <laughs> now, you know, we've been, um, there's so many different dating, online dating sites. Now, like my, I know uh, quite a lot of my friends are probably on 10, 20 different dates. I don't even know. I'm still discovering them all myself. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Another one. I can't even manage one right now. Never mind 10, 10, 20. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, how many dating sites uh, do, you th- do you recommend to go on rather than, you know, uh, for my personal view, I think too many is just too many. I can't, you can't, you, there was too, you're talking to so many people. How are you supposed to build a connection with someone, you know? So uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I would, so I'm actually on, I use two, um, which I, both, I like both, which is Bumble and Hinge. Yeah. Um, I would say Bumble, Hinge and Tinder, I know in Australia are probably like the most, um, common top mm. three ones that I used. Um, and again, it all, is all down to personal preference. So some people feel too scattered using more than one app. So that's mm. fine. If if you feel more drawn to one app and the way it works, um, then go for that. Like feel into what feels um, good for you that you're naturally drawn to. Um, feedback I have gotten is that um, women prefer um, Hinge and uh, Bumble, mm. um, whereas Tinder seems to be for mm. everyone a bit more of a hookup. casual. Yeah, casual. <laughs> I, I guess I'm on the wrong one looking for a relationship. I'm just like casually looking for a relationship. No, no, no just hook up. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I really like the um, prompts in both Hinge and uh, Bumble because mm. then it kind of gives you an idea of like what people are looking for. And if, mm. if you kind of get a little bit more of a feel of what their personality is like mm. and what they're in. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think I was on Bumble uh, once, and um, it, the time I'm very something very slow to reply. I don't I'm don't really go on them much. So, you know, they have a limit of like 24 hours or something. You have to reply yeah. within the 24 hours, and it's like 10 days later. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point actually. And some people find that that doesn't work for them, and that's why they might prefer something like Hinge, where you don't have that time. Mm. Um, where it expires mm-hmm. yeah. yeah um now um going into more of a, a spiritual sort of sense uh conscious that you know um you know um i've come across many people and i've noticed this quite a lot recently that um majority so many people who go through that spiritual awakening um they they, they, their long-term relationship just kind of ends. It's like one person goes through their awakening and the other person isn't on par with them. It's like they're like a different vibration all of a sudden and it ends. Um, so what do you think? Wh- why do you think that's the case, like in a, in a full like detail? <clears throat> yeah, well, I guess like it's life completely changes when there's something that like snaps within you and you have this meaning for life where you want to understand more and you want to feel connected to source god whatever you want to call it spirituality Mm -hmm. and if someone if your partner is not on that path it creates a lot of friction and i Mm -hmm. certainly don't um encourage or recommend people to you know, try and force their partner into doing something. Because if, if that's not their time, that's not their time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can understand why if you're not both growing, and that's what often can happen is one person really wants to grow and evolve mm-hmm. and the other still wants to stay 
where it's yeah. comfortable, <laughs> mm. yeah. um, then you're on completely different paths. So I can see why. Um, and and I, I think that, you know, that that is something that has to happen in some instances. I think just because you're married or there has been love or there has been kids, if that fulfillment in that relationship is no longer there, that doesn't mean that you should still stay together. Like you both deserve mm. to be happy and that yeah. just may be different. It yeah. may be that you are no longer in that sort of, um, that sort of relationship. Yeah, and I also think like uh, going back to the shadow work we were discussing, uh, when you do wake up to your own truth, you you become aware of the shadow. You and uh, you're you're more self aware, so you start you it's it's like it's like what I say uh, um, when you unplug from the matrix, you can't plug back into it. Um, <laughs> so the 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 all the shadow work, and you go, you have to go on that path. Otherwise, you you're stuck. So you have to go on the path of working on yourself, the shadow work, and the connecting to yourself. They, but you know, I guess uh, that is probably one of the reasons why um, you feel triggered a lot by your partner because you're not obviously, like I said, you're not on the same wavelength anymore, and um, and you fulfilled what you. Uh, it's uh, maybe you had a contract with them, a soul, a soul contract that you know you uh, they're gonna come in from this period to that period, and then uh, you know you you're gonna go you you one of them is gonna have a spiritual awakening, and the other person isn't, so it's you go separate ways. Um, so yeah, it's it's a blessing, and uh, yeah, it spiritual is, awakening it, is yeah. It is a blessing, and I think that's the important thing for <laughs> people to note is that even if you know you do end up on separate paths there's so much that you've gotten out of that relationship or meeting mm -hmm. that person so you know focusing on like what can you be grateful for like that person that relationship came into your life for a reason um mm -hmm. and maybe it is only a season it's not your entire life but mm -hmm. um, what can you be grateful from from that and you know leave that I guess if you're going to leave that relationship leave it knowing that it yeah. happened it happened for a divine reason yes absolutely totally agree with that um now uh now this is a, this is this is something that really it's talked about mostly in a in a in a spiritual community and wider range as well uh the empaths and narcissists uh, combination now I was actually thinking the other day like you know how um two empath uh they're never attracted to each other in a, in a in a romantic sense for some reason i was like oh my god i'm an empath you're an empath this is match made in heaven we're both like nurturers we're both caring souls we are gonna be amazing and then it just does not work it's like that connection is the same connection isn't it so but um we oftentimes attract more narcissists because um now i'm being very careful about the label narcissist but you know just for the sake of like uh, explaining it we uh tend to attract more of a narcissist because it's like energetically narcissists are uh like a magnet for an empath um, and then it quickly becomes like a core dependent relationship. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, this is a good, good one, actually. And I see this come up a lot of people getting into this almost like a victim mindset of, again, why do I keep attracting this? But I'm a good person because we hear a lot, you know, relationships are mirrors. And it's like, well, if, if relationships are mirrors, then why... <clears throat> Am I attracting people who can be so cruel mm. when I'm such a good person and I have such a good heart? Um, but again, it it's kind of relates back to what we talked about earlier in that we'll attract people that will give us the gold nuggets that we need. Mm. Now, if you may be someone who is super giving, who um, is really loving and caring, but chances are that probably you're too giving and too caring and you no don't boundaries. know you don't have any boundaries mm. um which means that you're just leaving the gate wide open for these people to come in and take advantage so your biggest lesson is learning to have solid boundaries and mm. boundaries 
boundaries is self-love. That's like, yes. you might think that you're like super giving and caring, but what example are you setting for if you have children, your friends, your families, if you let people walk all over you over mm. and over again, you know, you're not actually being loving to yourself. You wouldn't tell someone else to um, just give and give and give mm. when they're just being used. So why do you do it to yourself? Mm. Um, yeah. So it's an interesting dynamic. Um, it really is. I mean, uh, it's, <laughs> You know, you, you, like I said, I I, I keep attracting so, someone. Um, I do attract empaths quite a lot, but then it doesn't work out because it just seems everything's great on paper, but the the connection is in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a really good point that you made, and and make, and it seems like the empaths are the fixers, and the narcissists need fixing. And um. <laughs> And it's just, it just seems to work. But then and now the way I see it is the, the narcissist, um, an empath, maybe that they, they're meant to come together, even though it's toxic. Sometimes it's quite abusive. They're meant to come together because it's a, it's a huge lesson for an empath to set boundaries, to empower them to becoming the greatest version of themselves. Um, and then who knows that they eventually they will find their empathic, um, you know, soulmate who is actually on the same wavelength. But before yeah. they have to go through the narcissist first um, in order to, you know, uh, set those boundaries. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, that's it. Exactly. So it can feel really harsh for some people who keep experiencing that. But um, like we've talked about before, it's all happening for your greatest good it's all happening for a reason and when you see that coming up time and time again um there's something there for you and it is actually a gift and once you learn boundaries like it's so empowering and you are actually more in alignment with your soul um and you can actually go a lot further um if you do you know learn to implement those boundaries yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of boundary, the boundary work, <laughs> lots of it, I feel like it never ends <laughs> for an empath. <laughs> yeah, so. It's, 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 it's really hard work and I, yeah, I've had to learn some hard lessons this mm. year and, and stuff keeps coming up to kind of like test, you know, have you really learned your lesson? Have you really learned <laughs> how to put it mm, yeah. in? Yeah, yeah. And there will be people who will encroach on my space and I will feel that it's a no, but there'll still be that part of me that's like, oh, that's on, that's an edge for me mm. to say no, mm. yeah. to end that connection or say something. Mm. Um, but it's just, you know, trusting that, um, you know, that growth is for your good and like keeping le leaning in and like mm. just yeah, keep doing it. Yeah, I know there's another question that I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, a lot of people get hurt while even online dating or dating someone in relationships, a lot of people do, you know, uh, experience, but they, they close their hearts very quickly. Now, um, how is is there a way where they can keep their heart open um while searching because i know okay this doesn't work out okay you're here it's okay to take time to yourself but then they keep it closed for a very very long time and and their soulmate could be just right in front of them but they can't see it they cannot yeah. see it so is there anything that you can say to these people i'm sure many of our listeners are experiencing this yeah, I can relate to that too. I think mm. after, you know, after heartbreak, you just want to close yourself off because you don't want to feel that pain again. You don't want to feel um, the hurt. I think the one thing that, that really comes to mind is like you've got to be honest with yourself at some point and mm. say, and, you know, ask yourself the question, like, what do I really want? Do I want to be alone? and not feel love for the rest of my life? Or am I willing to take the risk and, um, you know, open myself up to love again? And if you know that you want love, then you have to be willing to, to face into things, but mm. it's totally, it's totally worth it. <laughs> yeah. So is there, is there a way like, uh, the work that you do now, um, 
uh, you know, people can actually contact you. I'll, I'll link all your um, your oh, yeah. contact details. But so, is there uh, what specific work would you do with the not just with one like you know this topic or the wider range? What specific work do you do with the people? Um, so, my main focus at the moment is to work with people who are single at the mm-hmm. moment. Um, rather than people who are in relationships because I really want to help people while they are single to have that, like we talked about, to have that time to work on themselves if that's, you know, doing some healing work from past relationships or understanding why they keep attracting what they do Um, and then working on that, like, worthiness piece, boundaries and learning to have confidence and fun Mm -hmm. um, while dating. So how you can contact me um so i am uh active on social media that's probably my main way of like keeping in contact so Mm -hmm. you can find me on facebook so uh crystal is with a k so k-r-y-s-t-a-l and then doyle d-o-y-l-e um yeah, I post a lot on my personal page, actually. So I'm happy for people to, it's all um, public. So you can follow me so you can keep track of um, all the videos that I put out. You'll also see there's a link to a Facebook group on there if you feel like that as well. Um, Instagram is at K-R-Y-S-T and then Doyle. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the two. And then obviously website, uh, dub, dub, dub crystaldoyle.com awesome um so finally uh what is the one message that you would like to share uh with someone who's going through a breakup or heartbreak right now oh i remember thinking is the pain ever going to end Mm -hmm. (laughs) because (laughs) after it can be so overwhelming that you can't stop thinking about it or feeling it. Um, so I would say that just remember your emotions are like clouds. They will pass and absolutely you will feel better. Um, and, you know, your emotions don't have control of you. You, you have control. Um, you absolutely will get through it. Um, and um yeah just have faith i I can i promise you it does get better (laughs) yeah absolutely i think all of us and even listeners um would agree to that you know um one door closes and another one opens and then it's it's a better door you will never go back unless there's a lesson to learn from it you will never go back to something that's uh you know yeah (laughs) you never you won't go back you're always going forward that's it that's a really good point often people don't realize that when we finally close the door to one thing something like so amazing that we couldn't have even Mm. imagined comes out of it yeah and and then another thing i wanted to add is to don't be afraid to close the door because many people stay in even if they get friend zoned they stay in uh, in hope that, oh my God, this person is probably going to change their mind in hope, but then you fall even deeper and then they it's they may or they may not. So you have to set another, boundaries. So you have to set that boundary and say, no, this is not what I want. I have many friends around me. I have other people around me. Um, I'm not afraid to close this door because I know something better is coming. Yes, it's that absolute faith and trust that you are absolutely worthy of soul fulfilling love. Absolutely. Yay. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much, Crystal, uh, for coming on this podcast. I mean, uh, it's been amazing interviewing you. And I'm sure many of our listeners will be uh, they'll, 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 they'll be so happy hearing this because, you know, like I said before, uh, relationships in general is really, really tricky. And we, we, we need we need coaches like you to, uh, you know, sort ourselves out. Not, not just the relationships on in external but the internal 
work that we need to do uh, in, uh, in ourselves in order to get to that place where we manifest the person that we want but you know not being afraid of the shadow work and then understanding more about the divine and uh, feminine uh, divine masculine and feminine energy and you know um all the internal work like i said before so thank you so so much for uh your knowledge uh, i'm sure it's going to help many many people Oh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed um, being on here and speaking. And I'd also like to say thank you to you for sharing your light and creating um, this. I'm sure this is going to create an amazing ripple effect for so many people that, um, yeah, is really going to help. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. I would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. Share your thoughts on my Facebook and Instagram, Madhya Sosan. You can also check out my website, madhyasosan.com. If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Mads Corner, M-A-D-Z Corner. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends. Thank you once again, and I will see you on the next episode.